Hello Husklings! Today's retrospective is care of RS232boy and he suggests that instead of using data.set you can simply just use nub. On to day 7. And this is where I think the difficulty is starting to ramp up a little bit. The data sets are bigger and the algorithms required are a little bit more complicated. Today's problem involves a directed acyclic graph or DAG where the nodes are bags and the edges are what can be contained within those bags. As before, we're going to use our interact function and we're going to parse all of the input using parsec again. I've chosen a data structure to reflect the nature of each line in the input. Each line contains a bag and then the contents of each bag. The structure is firstly a bag, which we're going to define a parser for in a second, then the string contain, and then either the string no other bags, in which case we return an empty list, or a bag list, where a bag list is just a comma separated list of a bag with a count. So I'm going to write a parser called bags to parse that. Lastly, there's a full stop on the end of the line. The bag parser will parse the description of a bag, which is two words separated by a space and then followed by the string bag. We return the two description words concatenated together with a space in between. The colon here is a quicker way to concatenate a single character to the start of a string. The bags parser is going to give us back an int in a string representing the count and the description of a bag. We can pass the count by fmapping read over a many one digit. Then we get a space character and then we parse a bag and we already have a parser for that. We return the tuple of the count and the bag. So we're ready now to start processing the data but uh, first we need to get our input and we still have a few bugs in our parser. Firstly, we forgot to map the parser over each line of input. Next, instead of returning B and BS here, we've uh, returned for some reason the parsers themselves. Okay, so that's compiling, but it's not working because we forgot that there's an optional S on the end of the word bag when we parse a count of bags. Now that we're correctly parsing our list of bags, we can start to process them. We need to find the list of bags into which the shiny gold bag can be contained. We're going to start with a stub of a function called contained by any. And the idea of this function is to produce the list of bags contained by any of the bags in another list of bags. So then once we have that function written, we can get the length of contained by any of the shiny gold bag and subtract one for the shiny gold bag itself. And we should have a resulting number of bags. In this contained by any function, we're going to have to filter over our complete list of bags and we're going to call the filter match any. And in each item in our original list of bags, we're going to test that using match any to see if we get a match for the list of bags given. Let's write our matches any function and it's going to take in a list of bags and then one of our structures which contains a bag followed by the list of counts and bags that are contained within it. So we pull out the list of counts and bags and then we can use a list comprehension to grab each item in turn from the first list and then each bag, not including the count, from the second list. And then we test to see if the item is an element of that list. 
We only really care if that list is empty or not. So it doesn't really matter what we put in the clause there. So we use undefined and then test that against null. Uh, we have a compiling error because uh, the function should be called match any and indeed we need to compare the two bags and not use lm because we're already extracting out the second bag from the list. We're going to add the original list given to contained by any to its result. And then we're going to remove any duplicates and sort them to have a canonical ordering. Uh, we need to also make sure we are getting just the bags back from this filter, uh, in which case we just map first over that filter. And we need to get the parentheses right, and now we should get back one extra element because we're adding back in the shiny gold bag. And this is why we minus one at the end. Okay, so I'm going to write a higher order function now called converge. And the idea is that we're going to iterate over this contained by any function until we get convergence. Converge is gonna be quite simple to write. We have a function from A to A and an A, and we're gonna keep applying that function to our result until the result doesn't change. We're using equals equals on the x values, so we need to make sure that it is a member of the eek type class. And that actually should be our answer, so let's check that. And we've earned our gold star. As always, part two is a bit more tricky, and you might think we have to do things the other way around, but they've actually given us a big clue by talking about topology. When we start with the set of bags that don't contain any other bags, and then we expand on that set by adding bags that only contain the bags that we already have in the set, then we only need to calculate the number of contained bags once for each bag type. Let's start by finding all the bags whose contents are in the list of bags we already know about. We ignore the bag counts for now by mapping second across y's. We use the list difference operator to remove all the elements of x's from our resulting list. When the result of that is empty, that means that we already know about all of the contents of that bag, so we should include it in our list. Let's remove the contained by any function, because we don't need that anymore. The next function we're going to write, we're going to call getAll. It's going to take in a map of the bags that we already know about and the number of bags contained within those bags. It will update that map by adding in all the bags that we get from contained by all. We do this by folding an add function over that list. The add function is going to take the map and the item we want to add, and it's going to calculate the number of contained bags in that item. The item is going to consist of the bag name plus the number of contained items. We insert the item using insert with flip const, which ensures we don't recalculate a value that's already in our map. We insert the new bag into our map, but we still need to somehow calculate the number of contained bags. Well, let's make another function for that. We'll call that calc. It will take as parameters our map and the list of contained bags for our item. We do this calculation by doing a sum over all of the contained items. Now each of those contained items is paired with its count. Because we already made sure that every contained bag was already in our set, we can get the total count by looking up in our map the number of bags contained within this bag, adding one for the bag itself, and then multiplying by the count. To get our result, we just need to converge on contained by all on the empty set. Okay, a few minutes of debugging later, and it's actually the get all function that we converge on. And of course we meant y's here, not the original b's. Okay, 
that seems to have given us a result. Let's check that. And it's still not the right answer. And that's of course because we don't want to take the length of that map. We actually just want to look up the value of the shiny gold bag in that map. So let's do that. And that should be our answer. Which of course it is. As I was completing this puzzle, I always had in the back of my mind that if I needed to speed things up a little bit, then all this string comparison is probably a bit inefficient. So it would be better for us to use a bag type and instead of using strings, we would use this bag type. Now, how do we get an integer from a string to make the bag type more efficient? Well, there's a function called hash and it's defined in data.hashable. And that will allow us to essentially pass around integers instead of strings and still get the same result. We need to remember also to hash our shiny gold bag as input. Now we still need to import the hash function from data.hashable. And that's now compiling again with the same result as before. So until tomorrow, happy Haskelling!